most irrigated crop research programs involve wheat or cotton. This trial is underway to optimise yields and grower returns from other irrigated grain crops. In its second year, the project, led by Far Australia with GRDC Investment, has another 12 months to run. The project that uh, we're showcasing today is called Optimising Irrigated Grains. COVID has limited grower numbers attending the trial's field day. What they're looking at is the result of soil amelioration treatments and agronomic practices. What they want to hear is what agronomic levers to pull to increase yields and how soil amelioration interacts with irrigation to improve water use efficiency. Agronomy and amelioration are the project's main components and Dr Asan Tavakoli oversees the amelioration research. What we are trying to achieve here is to improve the size of the bucket in this case and have a better crop access to that subsoil water after improving the subsoil properties if there is an identified and recognized issue with the, with the soil either, um, either in the subsoil actually or in the topsoil. The Optimising Irrigated Grains project has trial sites across four states. The amelioration work is confined to just two locations in southern New South Wales. Narong, which has self-mulching grey soils, and Finlay with its red soils. At Finlay, intensive soil sampling and analysis found no real topsoil issues, but several lowered down the profile. We found out that there is issues related to subsoil dispersion and slaking, and also extremely alkaline um, uh, subsoils because when you have high pH you have a lot of negative charge on the clay which is repulsive and so the clay tends to disperse in, um, uh, when it comes in touch with water. West of Finlay at the Narong site both the topsoil and subsoil had issues. There has been a lot of um, issues in the surface crusting and a poorly um, a structured topsoil in addition to some issues that we also identified in the subsoil. So our soil sampling suggested that um, the surface application of organic amendment, for example, could benefit um, uh, the topsoil improvements in Norong site, as opposed to the, um, to the appropriate uh, level of um, organic carbon in Finley site. Um, and both of those sites received a surface applications of some of the amendments and also the subsurface application to see um, their fa factorial design and comparison across uh, four replicate, um, what sort of crop responses and also corrections in soil properties we can obtain after a few years of that one-off application. What is also different about the two sites is their recent cropping history and soil nitrogen levels present at the start of the trial. The site at Finlay in 2018 had a favour bean crop that failed due to drought and then the following year the site was fallowed as a lot of redevelopment was done. So that led to a very high soil nitrogen level leading into the 2020 crop and you know that can have an impact on, on some of our trials. A one-off application of um, organic amendment together with gypsum in year one of the project resulted in 27% improvement in yield productivity of fava bean. In this case, the amendment was P. hay stubble, which Dr. Tavakoli said interacted well in an irrigated farming system. And this is, um, resulted in that significant improvements in yield and productivity. And my hope is, and based on our modelling work, it, um, this suggests that over the next seven to ten years, the, the residual effect of such a work will last um, and, and hopefully we see consistent improvements. At Narong, oats had been grown before the site was ripped and another plant-based amendment added. Where we had put out the organic amendment, which was loosened pellets, we saw a massive amount of mineralisation, um, so release of nitrogen, which was very apparent in the subsequent crop of oats that we put in in 2020. The ripping treatments weren't quite as apparent. Um, it was difficult to pick them out over the control in the sort of first half of the season. But as the season progressed and moisture became a little bit tight at the end of uh, winter, then where the site had been ripped, we actually started to see some improvements in crop growth, but nothing like what we'd seen with the um, extra nitrogen through the organic amendment. Victoria's Irrigated Cropping Council and New South Wales-based Field Applied Research Australia coordinate research at the project's two main sites, Kerrang and Finlay. And here, as well as at the interstate trial sites, 
agronomy is the project's ongoing focus. And to evaluate agronomic levers, trial plots are irrigated using either surface or overhead irrigation. For example, it might be that if you sow on one type of irrigation, you need a higher plant population than another type of irrigation, or a different variety might require a different plant population. And you know, then we'll measure the canopy, how many tillers, for example, and what was the dry matter at different stages throughout the crop, and how does that affect the yield. One of the main agronomic levers is nitrogen rates, and the project is aiming to answer the question, how hard can you push nutrition to increase yield? For example, in maize, we're putting up to 500 kilos of nitrogen per hectare, but we're not finding a response above 250 kilograms per hectare. In canola, we're putting up to 300 kilos per hectare, and there's no response above 150, 160. And then in Durham, similar story, we're going up to 350 kilos of nitrogen per hectare and in our, you know, our response again is not much above 150 kilos of nitrogen per hectare. These responses to background soil fertility in combination with fertiliser application challenge nutrient management thinking and the results being seen with canola are a good example of that. The common metric is that you need to get seven tonne of dry matter at early flowering and we did achieve that with the highest rate of nitrogen, but we also achieved five tonne per hectare at 160 kilos of nitrogen, and the yield, final grain yield, was no different. So, you know, we're questioning these, these metrics. Do you need to get your seven tonne of dry matter at early flowering when five tonne gives the same result? Uh, along with wheat, do you need high rates of seed to, to get high tiller numbers when we can get the, the top yield at lower plant populations. End rates are one part of a complex business decision for growers. They're also very conscious of water costs and getting the right balance between optimising yields and cost of production, and this is a real challenge. Do I push for the high yield, but I mean, that's gonna take three irrigations, so water's at this price, so can I afford it to do it? Or is it the best way to do it? Or is it accepting that I'm not doing things agronomically 100% to maximise yield, but at the end of the day, it will make me more money from limited water or expensive water that I've got to use. What will help answer those questions is a Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture economic project called Water Can Profit. It's being run in conjunction with the Optimising Irrigated Grains trials. Water Can Profit takes the gross margins from the different crops, the cost of water, other crop input costs, projected grain yields and returns, to calculate what is the best crop to grow if water is limited and more expensive. There's a link to the calculator at the end of this video. The more expensive irrigation water gets, the more it's not just, a, a, it's not just simply grow a crop, water it, hope that it yields well. It's, we're getting to the stage where it has to yield well and it has to yield economically. There were plenty of questions for the project's leaders. How do you get seven tonne of faba beans and five tonne of canola under irrigation? And how was the highest grade of durum, DR1 with 13% protein, achieved? And the answer to all three of those questions seems to come back to soil fertility. What we're finding is that we're getting yields that use up nitrogen much greater than the amount we need to apply to get those yields. So going forward, every year we're going to be taking more off the, with the crop than what we're applying. And that's a, an issue that needs to be addressed. Issues and outcomes will shape the last year of the trial. Most trials will be repeated in 2022, but where a treatment has delivered no benefit after two years, it will be stopped. And another treatment showing greater promise given more attention. A good example of that is in maize, we did some fungicide work and after two years we found no result with fungicide. Uh, we've done a little bit of row spacing work in maize and seen some interesting res results, so we're going to ramp that up in the third year. While not every trial site can hold a field day, the agronomic research is replicated at the interstate sites, where similar crop responses are being seen to those here at Finlay. We hope that at the end of the three-year project that we've developed a suite of what we'd like to call good management practices, and that those management practices, if used, will give farmers consistent and reliable yields under irrigation. 
Helping to make growers aware of the project's outcomes will be action learning groups and the research partners involved. And for more information about the Water Can Profit Calculator and optimising irrigated grains trial reports, use the following links. Mm -hmm.